Hey there, otaku. What's up? This is Rick speaking, and today we're going to dive headfirst into the world of anime. Leave that naughty like, and if you're not subscribed yet, let's get that sorted out now, okay? Now, just imagine, you live in a world full of magic, where all kinds of trouble happens, with weapons created from your own soul. Sounds amazing, right? But wait, you don't have the same magical powers as everyone else around you. Still, no one can deny it. You're the most skilled swordsman who ever lived. The story begins with our protagonist, Iki Kirigane, a student at a school where everyone is born with magical powers. He begins to narrate a little about what his life is like there. Just look at the scheme. When you're born into this world, you're either respected or completely despised. And those who are despised, they're thrown into limbo as if they'll never get anywhere in life. And that's the detail about Iki. Even though he's popular among the students, he's still seen as inferior, all because he doesn't have the same magical powers as everyone else. The kids actually like him, but they treat him differently, you know? So, we see Iki summoning his sword, and in the meantime, he explains that the so-called blazers are people who can forge a weapon created directly from their souls, and with this weapon, they gain an unreal power. But there's more. Those who are approved by the international organization become the famous mage knights, or, as the kids joke, the magic nerds. That's Iki's dream, to become one of them one day. After some hard sword training, he goes back to the dorm, and that's when things get interesting. Accidentally, he ends up entering the room at the wrong time, and, oops, he comes face to face with the girl changing. Her name, Stella. And what's more, she's a princess from another country. Can you imagine the atmosphere? Before Stella could say anything, what did Icky do? He awkwardly lifted his shirt and showed off his six-pack to try to turn the tables. But honestly, this only made the situation even more bizarre. Stella got really embarrassed and started calling him all sorts of names. But to make things better, Icky quickly apologized explaining that he simply couldn't look away because she was, well, really pretty. After this unexpected confession, Stella calmed down and soon went back to her normal self, trying to pretend that nothing had happened, but you could tell that the tension was still there. After all the drama, the school principal showed up and dropped a bombshell. He told Stella that since there weren't any other F-level students to pair up with Icky, she would have to be his new partner. Yes, that's right, Stella, a princess from another country, would be roommates with Icky, the weakest guy in the school. Icky, of course, is completely shocked by the idea, and immediately asks the sword director how it is possible that the lowest ranking student is sharing a room with someone at the top of the class. Stella, already embarrassed by the situation, immediately protests to the head teacher, asking for another roommate because she wanted to be the owner of the room. But it seems that things are not going to be that easy for her, right? So, the sword director makes an unconventional proposal, a duel. The winner will not only be the owner of the room, but will also have the right to give orders to the other for the rest of his life. Imagine the atmosphere. When the other students find out about this, the news quickly spreads throughout the school, and soon the training arena is packed with people wanting to see the weakest student face the strongest student. Before the duel begins, the head teacher appears to explain the rules. Everything ready, Icky summons his sword, preparing for combat. On the other side, Stella does the same, but then comes the shock. When she summons the sword, a colossal tornado of fire appears, called Dragon's Wrath, burning at over 3000 degrees Celsius. The princess is not messing around. She advances with everything, ready to finish Icky off but he, fast as always, manages to dodge the first attack. After Icky dodges the attack, Stella can't believe her eyes. She looks at him and says, Man, you were so lucky. If that fire had gotten you, you'd be done for. Even without being able to use magic, and with Stella clearly being much stronger, Icky is still a master of the sword, and this starts to make her nervous. How can such a low-level student be fighting on equal terms with her? During the duel, Icky explains that he never had anyone to teach him. He learned everything on his own, studying the techniques of lower-level blazers. 
With that, he developed his own strategy, situational analysis, where he uses his opponent's tactics against them. Even so, Icky's sword has no magic, and so he cannot break Stella's fire armor. Seeing that his level is high, Stella decides to end the fight quickly, and begins charging her next attack. She tells Icky that this time she will finish him, but he will not give up so easily. Icky begins to narrate his thoughts, explaining that even without the ability to be a magic king, it is the will to never give up that defines him. He still believes that the weakest can defeat the strongest. And then, something incredible happens. Icky begins to move at an absurd speed, almost as if it were the speed of light. He dodges all of Stella's moves and, with a final attack, wins the duel in epic fashion. Icky's final move leaves all the students completely shocked. They cannot believe what they have just seen. However, right after performing this insane skill, Icky's body collapses to the ground, completely exhausted. The reason? He can only use this move once a day, and the total effort takes its toll. After the duel, Stella recovers and receives a visit from the school's head teacher. She admits that she had forgotten what it was like to lose a fight, because it had been so long since her last defeat. Curious, Stella asks the teacher to tell her the truth about Icky, and why he was so strong in combat, even though he was classified as an F-rank student. The teacher explains that all blazers are evaluated based on their magical abilities, not their hand-to-hand -hand combat sword skills or physical strength. That is why, despite Icky being an incredible swordsman, he is still considered the weakest in the school. His magical abilities are simply not enough to move up in the rankings. After the duel, Stella goes to visit Icky while he is still recovering. They talk, and end up agreeing to get closer and become friends. The next day, the two decide to train together, and Stella notices that Icky is much happier than usual. Curious, she asks why. Icky responds with a smile, explaining that his sister is starting her first day of school there, and he has not seen her in many years. The news brings him great joy, and Stella can see it. Soon after, they go to the classroom, where a new teacher introduces herself, Yuri. She arrives with some explosive news, telling the class about the upcoming event, the Seven Star Sword Art Festival. In this tournament, the six students with the most powerful skills will be chosen to represent the school. During the break, a girl approaches Icky, full of enthusiasm, and says that she is his biggest fan. So, will this create new tension? Stella, of course, doesn't let it go, and immediately asks who the girl who approached Icky is. He, not understanding anything, answers that he has no idea who she is. The girl then introduces herself, Kagami, and says that she saw Icky fight in the duel against the princess. But this makes Stella visibly uncomfortable, and she walks away, all serious. Icky, trying to fix the situation, goes after her. But the surprises don't stop there. As he tries to reach Stella, Shizuku, his long-lost sister, appears out of nowhere. Before he can react, she kisses him in front of everyone, and, with the greatest air of calm, says that, This is how foreigners greet their loved ones. This, of course, shocks all the students around, and Stella blushes with embarrassment. The atmosphere heats up, and Stella starts arguing with Shizuku about Iki. Shizuku, teasingly, asks what kind of relationship they have, and in the midst of the confusion, Stella ends up accidentally blurting out that Iki is her master, and she is his servant. You can imagine the chaos, right? The people around her start making jokes and insinuating a lot of things, which only makes the situation worse. Furious, Shizuku draws her sword and charges at Stella, and the two start fighting. Of course, this was not going to go unnoticed, and the school ends up punishing the two for fighting on the school field but you can see that the tension between them is just beginning. While they are in detention, Stella and Shizuku can't stay quiet for long and start arguing again. Stella says that she doesn't understand why Shizuku is so obsessed with her brother, and then Shizuku, without thinking, ends up revealing something that Stella didn't know, Iki's past, and how his family always treated him as if he didn't even exist. After that, Shizuku leaves and goes to her new dorm, where she meets her new partner, Alice. But that revelation won't leave Stella's mind. 
She doesn't waste time and goes straight to ask Icky if it's true that his family always ignored him. Icky, surprised that she knows this, confirms it. He admits that he was treated like a nobody by his own family, and starts to tell a little more about his past. He asks Stella if she knows the legendary samurai, Ryoma Kirigane, his grandfather. Stella responds immediately, saying that she knows who he is, as he was the hero who guided Japan in the last world war. Iki then reveals that Ryoma is the man he always wanted to be, his greatest inspiration. Iki continues to tell about his family, which is famous for producing only the best blazers in history. But when he was born, everything changed. Iki continues the story, explaining that when his family discovered that he was unable to use magic, everything changed. Unlike the other members, who were super talented and charismatic, he was treated as a disgrace. He was abandoned by everyone and became invisible in the eyes of his own family. Then, one day, Iki couldn't take it anymore and decided to run away from home. He started walking aimlessly until he was caught in a snowstorm in the mountains. Desperate and believing that this would be his end, something unexpected happened. His grandfather, Ryoma Kirigane, appeared to save him. Ryoma knew that Iki didn't have the gift of magic, but that didn't matter to him. Instead, he taught Iki the art of the samurai and the way of armor. Since then, Iki has promised himself that he will become strong, just like his grandfather. But even after all this training, the Kurigana family still doesn't recognize Iki's strength. In fact, they went even further. They pressured the school to prevent him from graduating. Not an easy situation. The next day, Iki and Stella continue to practice their combat skills, training with the sword, just like the rest of the school. But right after training, they are invited by Shizuku and her new partner, Alice, to take a walk in the evil district. It seems that another adventure is going to happen there. They don't get along so well at first, and to be honest, they hardly say a word during the walk. But even so, Iki, Stella, Shizuku, and Alice end up going to a restaurant to eat something. While they wait for the food, Iki and Alice leave for a moment, going to the bathroom to wash their hands. And that's when things get heated. Suddenly, a group of terrorists invade the place, and Iki and Alice can hear some suspicious voices on the other side of the wall. The attack begins, but Alice, always smart, uses her shadow magic to create portals, ensuring that they can escape unharmed. They teleport straight to the security office, where they start checking the hidden cameras. In the recordings, they discover that Shizuku and Stella have been captured by the terrorists. The situation becomes even more tense when they try to ask for help from the woman at the reception. She warns that the police are already on their way, but explains that the hidden men have hostages around them. Shortly after, a brave boy tries to attack one of the terrorists, but ends up being hit and the bandits start shooting. It is at this moment that Stella springs into action, activating her fire armor to protect the boy, blocking the shots with her magic. The tension only increases when the leader of the gang, who introduces himself as Bishu, enters the room. But then, Bishu pulls out an ace up his sleeve. He uses an artifact called the Ring of Judgment, which has a very dangerous power. The ring can absorb shadow magic and return it against his opponents. He threatens Stella, saying that if she wants to save the hostages, she will have to take off her clothes. Stella, trying to protect the innocent, begins to give in but that's when Iki appears. He sees the scene and, without understanding what's going on, tries to run to save Stella. But Alice acts quickly, using a spell called Shadowbind to hold Iki back. Alice tells Iki that he needs to trust Shizuku, who is busy building a magical barrier in the meantime. While the confusion continues, we see Shizuku finally finish the barrier, creating an impenetrable wall of water around the civilians. The gang starts shooting at the barrier, but their shots are useless. That's when Shizuku gives Iki the signal to act. Iki doesn't waste any time. He activates his Aida Shura ability, which allows him to slow down time and analyze every move with precision. With this advantage, he attacks the gang and goes straight to the boss, defeating Bishu with a single accurate strike. Iki manages to defeat all the bandits and approach the boss, 
With a quick strike, he takes the Ring of Judgment from Bishu, ending the threat. But before he can breathe a sigh of relief, something unexpected happens. Another member of the terrorists, who was disguised as a hostage, appears in the midst of the chaos. But before he can do anything, a student appears and defeats the terrorist with ease. This student is Kirahara, a blazer who represented the school in the Seven Star Sword Art Festival last year. And guess what? He will also be Iki's next opponent in the qualifiers. The festival is approaching, and Iki spends hours watching Kirahara's recordings, studying his moves and strategies. Stella, curious, asks why he is so focused, and says that Kirahara's ability, called Invisible Area, allows him to completely hide himself, leaving no trace of his appearance, smell, or even the sound he makes. But Iki, always calm, responds that everything will be fine. He knows that he will have to find a way to defeat him, and he is confident that he can do it. Later, as Iki is leaving a training session, he runs into Alice, who asks if he knows Kirahara well. Iki takes the opportunity to tell a story about him and reveals something interesting. Iki's family had a connection with the former school principal. Because of this, Iki's own family tried to ruin his school life because they did not want to be shamed by the reputation of having a member without magic in the Kurigana family. Iki's family, determined to get him out of school, used Kirahara to try to humiliate him and force him to leave. But, true to his style, Iki did not give in and continued on without retaliating. Now, the confrontation between the two will finally happen, and the entire school is eager to see this battle. Kirahara, who is super popular, has the support of a good part of the students. But Iki is not alone in this. He also won many fans after winning the duel against Princess Stella, the most powerful student. Iki's fighting style, focused on situational analysis, has already impressed many people. But this time, he is facing a master of invisible magic. Kirahara is considered Iki's first true enemy. The battle begins, and the arena transforms into a digital forest, full of trees and obstacles. In this environment, Kirahara activates his Hunter Forest ability, which allows him to become invisible and attack with precision, using arrows to surprise Iki. But Iki, always focused, manages to dodge the arrows and identify the origin of the attacks. He does not let Kirahara's style intimidate him. With a quick strategy, Iki launches a counterattack, aiming right at where Kirahara was hiding. Realizing that his usual tactics weren't working, Kirahara decides to step up the game. He uses his most advanced magical abilities and makes the arrows become invisible. Now, Iki can no longer see the attacks before they reach him. The tension only increases. After being hit by several arrows, Iki begins to feel the weight of the battle. He is frustrated and furious. To make matters worse, the announcer takes advantage of the moment and begins to humiliate Iki, reminding everyone that he is an F-class student. This only serves to fuel the laughter of the other students, who begin to shout, saying that Iki will never win the seven-star tournament. But Stella, in the midst of all this pressure, remembers what Iki said before, that he promised to find a way to defeat Kirahara. And even seeing Iki being hit repeatedly, she does not give up on him. Iki, after taking many hits, ends up falling to the ground. The audience bursts into laughter and applause, celebrating Kirahara's early victory. They start calling Iki the worst of them all, but Stella doesn't stay quiet. She shouts for everyone to hear, defending Iki. He's as good as anyone here, she shouts. And then, turning to Iki, she asks him not to give up to show everyone his true skills. Stella's words hit the nail on the head. Iki, now motivated, thanks her for the strength and starts to focus. He starts to remember the pattern and speed of Kirahara's shots, and with that, calculates the exact time it takes for the invisible arrows to hit him. Armed with this information, Iki can now dodge the invisible arrows. The announcer, surprised, tells everyone that Iki is using an ability called Blade Steel, which allows him to observe and adopt the techniques of any blazer and use them against his opponents. The audience, which had previously been laughing, is now silent, watching the change in the battle. 
But this time, Icky goes even further. He uses a more powerful version of the ability called Perfect Vision. And now, he is the one who becomes the true hunter of the forest, just like Kirahara did before. When Kirahara sees this, fear takes over. He realizes that Ikki has turned the tables and Desperate asks him to stop. Kirahara tries one last move, but without success, he ends up begging for his life and even suggests that they become friends. At the decisive moment, Ikki stops his sword at the last second, just as it touches Kirahara's face. The audience can hardly believe what just happened. The explosion of power that Ikki held back almost destroyed everything around him, but he managed to control it in time. If you enjoyed this epic ending and want more anime recaps like this, comment below what you thought of this anime. And, of course, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Until next time, everyone, take care.